Welcome back everyone. I've got a quick one for you today. I want to show you how to achieve this subtle but cool neon backlighting effect in Affinity Photo 2. I can't afford to hire a model for these tutorials, so I decided to go to picklumen.com to generate one for free. I'll show you real quick how you can generate an image just like mine. Once on the site, I clicked the Launch App button on top right corner and made sure I was on the Create tab in the left-hand menu. Then, I typed in a descriptive prompt of what I wanted to generate. I'll leave links to the prompt and the output in the description. Anyway, once I had that in, I clicked the Advanced Settings button next to the description. I changed the model to Pick Lumen Realistic V2. I changed the aspect ratio to 16 by 9, and then I selected 4 for the number of images. Then, I clicked this little purple arrow button to generate my images. Pick Lumen will think a little bit and then spit out four images for me to choose from. I'll choose the one in the bottom left corner and select Upscale in the little pop-up. I'll set the enlargement factor to two times and then click Submit. Pick Lumen things a bit more and then generates this nice image here. I'll click on the download icon at the bottom of the image and then select the PNG or JPG option to download. Okay, now back in Affinity Photo 2, I've opened my download image. The first thing I want to do is to click on the selection brush tool and paint over my digital model to select her. As always with a brush, you can click the left square bracket key to make your brush head smaller so you can get these finer areas like her hands. And you can hold the Option or Alt key while painting to remove areas that were over-selected like this area between her legs. Alright, I'll just go over a couple areas around her hair here and then I'll click on the Refine tool in the top toolbar. This looks like a really good selection other than her hair. I'll just go over that real quick with the Matte Adjustment Brush tool. There, that looks good. So, I'll go to the Output drop-down, select New Layer with Mask, and then click Apply to put her into her own layer. Affinity automatically turned off the background layer. So, I'll turn that back on by clicking the little dot to the right of the layer. Okay, next I'll select the Cutout layer and duplicate it twice by clicking on the Command or Control key plus J twice. Then, I'll turn the top two duplicate layers off and I'll select the lowest cutout layer. Next, I'll go to the FX button at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll select Color Overlay and check the box. Then, I'll click on the black color box and adjust the color wheel so that it's a nice bright pink color. Next, I'll select the Gaussian Blur option, check the box, and then raise the slider all the way up to the right until my lady here has a nice pink glow around her. Okay, I'll close that out and I'll turn the middle cutout layer back on by clicking the dot. Then, I'll go back to the FX button at the bottom of the Layers panel. This time, I'll select Outer Glow and check the box. I'll raise the radius up to about 19 or 20 and I'll lower the intensity down to about 20%. I was thinking about changing the colour too, but with the lowered intensity, white looks fine to me. Alright, next I'll turn the top cutout layer back on. Then, I'll select the middle cutout layer. I'll right-click on it and scroll down to Rasterize. I'll turn off the Preserve Layer FX checkbox and then click Rasterize to put this all into a single pixel layer. Then, I'll do the exact same thing for the lowest cutout layer. Okay, now, I don't want all this backlighting. I just want it around the areas facing the neon lights to the left, top, and top right. So, I'll hold the Shift key and select the middle and bottom cutouts. Then, I'll right-click on them and choose Merge Selected to put both of them into a single layer. Next, I'll make sure my paintbrush tool in the left-hand toolbar is selected and that the color is set to black. Then, 
With the merged layer selected, I'll click on the Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel to add a mask. Finally, with the new mask selected, I'll just paint black on it wherever I want to remove the backlight glow. And so yeah, there you go. I told you it was subtle, but I really like the added effect. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.